So I know you guys enjoy playing England, France, Austria, Spain, and so on, but there's one nation that I'm 100% sure you haven't tried yet, and this nation has some surprisingly unique flavor and the ability to form an even more unique nation. That's gonna be our goal for today, because we're playing as Rwanda, my boys. There you go, we got two provinces, 6,000 boyos over here, and the chattiest map sprite ever. I mean, look at the amount of color on this uniform here we got one two three okay that's it three colors but the point is that they're arranged very nicely all right that's that's the main idea here. Wait, oh oh it's the colors of the flag of Rwanda I never noticed this all right now um <laughs> we're gonna have to kill off all these guys around here let's see what we need as well do we need to core all of this stuff yes we gotta core all of the provinces too after we've unified Rwanda and we formed the magnificent nation of Kitara we get some other juice and we're gonna be able to expand into Congo, Kilwa, and so on. But for the time being, it's time to murder all of our neighbors in good old Rwandan fashion. Too soon? Too soon? Okay, maybe a little bit too soon. So, the first thing, of course, rival everybody you can in the whole wide world. There you go. One and uh, two and uh, three. So I'm gonna go for Buha third. Buha's got three provinces. I wouldn't mind getting my hands on three provinces. No advisors, because our economy is dog schnitzel. 0.36 ducats profit. It's, it's basically non-existent. And we're we are gonna be doing our estates, of course. A very standard estate, nothing unusual here, nothing out of the ordinary, so you probably know what's happening. We are giving supremacy over the tribal kingdom too, even though it's gonna increase our influence, doesn't matter. There's enough nations to get our crownlands back up after conquest, since we only have two provinces, and we're gonna be adding an extra 10 provinces to our country. You know, I did have one game in which I forgot to seize crownlands, and then I had to just develop the crownlands, <laughs> wasting so much of my mana points. It was my Teutonic run, by the way. I don't know if anyone noticed that, but I forgot to seize the 5% crownlands in 1444. <laughs> That's like the only nation you should never forget that with, you know, because of the disaster. Oh, we got a juicy morale of armies. Rumeza Abashmagabadabubu. Yeah, I'm gonna get that guy once I can afford him. And uh, let me, speaking of affording, let's get some uh, burger loans. And let's also start getting claims on everybody around. Do we get claims from our missions, actually? Get claims on the entirety of the Rwandan area what force limit and military advisor okay looks like we are gonna be hiring this guy here and to get to force limit we need two more units so let's hire of course the free company boys everybody's favorite company in the whole wide world and Witten the free company we got the prepare for war all right oh we're only getting on the Rwandan state I thought it would be like the entire region here man oh this is much disappointment do I get any more claims on everybody else around I, t I get until the end of the game prestige decay reduction and tolerance of the true faith not bad What else is there a lot of temporary bonuses also central African region? There you go. We do get this man. Come on that's the entirety of the Central African region. I need to do train the army profit for war and have grown by five states. So I got to eat all of the interlacustine area then. War reparations from three countries and 25 army professionalism? What? Okay, that seems like a pretty steep amount of stuff that they require for that mission. Let's make our leader a generalus also. And he doesn't have any siege pips. Feels bad. All right, 11th of December. Let me also get my cult because I forgot to get that. And we're going to go for the discipline uh, plus 2.5, of course, so we can uh, have have a little bit of a boost in this war to come. Time to enlarge in our horizons, boys. Get three provinces bigger. And speaking of bigger, you know what they say about people from the uh, Rwandan area, right? Oh, oh, you don't? Just wanted to put it out there so I can thoroughly make this conversation extremely awkward. Okay, boys, time to say bye-bye. Imagine if I actually lost this battle. I wouldn't be surprised if they got some really great uh, dice rolls, but they didn't. They got trash dice rolls. Let's go, boys. Let's kill us all. Wait, where are they going? They're not going to Muhambue. Damn, I nailed that pronunciation first time, didn't I? Muhambue. Waka waka wa. Hey hey. Muhambue. Getting mass kicked by the natives. I shouldn't have gone here. <laughs> I'm going back. I'm going back. Oh, I'm retreating in Lega. Okay, this was a double mistake. I'm also surprised that only Burundi got an ally in Kazembe. These guys here have not gotten any allies yet. So I guess um, 
Rwandan people are not as unified as you would expect them to be. Truth be told, this would probably be the Uganda area more than Rwanda, since Rwanda and Burundi in the real world are just small little nations over here in this particular area, compared to Uganda having the majority of this, and then, uh, what is it, uh, Tanzania has the area to the south, and Kenya has this bit over here, the Swahili nations. I wish I could actually play um, Shakira's song, but I would get copyright strike, so of course I'm not gonna do that. 334 days to siege the mud huts of uh, Ruguru. They didn't even have fortresses in Africa in 1400s, bro. Come on. This is massively unrealistic. We should be getting these provinces instantly, essentially. I'm, I'm just speaking facts right here. Let's, uh, let's quarrel this stuff up before I get cancelled. Okay, come on. Really? How come Africans have better cavalry units than the Europeans? Are you telling me that naked boyos with horses were stronger cavalry units than uh, medieval European knights. I, 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 I'm gonna put a massive doubt on this particular pip distribution here. Time for the next war. Actually, can I attack these guys? They didn't get any allies yet, did they? No, they didn't. <laughs> Is I a big and mistaken, boys? A big and mistaken, Nikori? Bye bye, Nikori. Now watch them win this battle. Seriously, watch them win this battle right here. Of course, they're not gonna win. Come on, boys, come on. They're gonna go somewhere. I don't know where. I'm not gonna chase them again this time. I'm just gonna leave my mercy to siege that down though. I have to figure out a way to get feudalism. I'm gonna have to maybe work my way towards the kill one lands or if not I would have to just manually spawn it. I'd rather not have to manually spawn it though. It would be such a massive amount of mana points that I need to invest in feudalism. Hey, hey, hey that's right you should fight the natives too. See how you like it. Oh disaster has struck. Our Lidorski has passed away and somehow we got an air. Yeah yeah this this right here this works. This is one in every five Rwandan kids have this name, so um, just trying to stay historical here. Seems like he needs to do the vision quest. Pizza man by day, doctor in the afternoon, and housekeeper in the evening. Johnnycus Africanus is a true Rwandan hero. They will say tales of glory about Johnnycus one day when nobody else is left to hear it. That's right, we've been talking about this man for the past five minutes whilst I was waiting for that to siege down. But you're not gonna hear all of that conversation because I'm gonna be editing half of it since most of it it's related to stuff I probably shouldn't be talking on YouTube. I'm sorry what? Buhan Separatist just came back right now. Isn't this the nation I killed like a few years ago? Where did these guys go? What were they doing there? And what made them come back a few years after their country disappeared? I have so many unanswered questions and yet so few answers. I made the mistake of taking a quick look at the cultural map mode <laughs> and realizing that there's like a trillion different cultures in this one small region. Typical African I have to say. Just like in Central Africa there's a billion ones and in this area and this area and all of the other areas. Pretty much the reason why uh, you know they kept fighting amongst each other for so long. But now it's all good boys because modern African countries have borders drawn alongside the ethnic makeup of their country. <laughs> I'm just joking. They're drawn based on the previous colonial provinces of the major empires, which is why there's still a lot of ethnic conflicts in these countries today. It's, it's, it's horrible. It's really horrible. I'm honestly more worried about the natives when I attack this province than I am about Caraguay's army since uh, the natives might do a little bit more damage to me than Caraguay will. Boom, boys, they're gone. Now let's get out of there before the natives get really angry with us and um, try and eat us. Can I do the peace deal? We gotta wait for a few more months, I guess, or we have to go down and siege these boys down. That would be the bad outcome, because I would have to go through this province of Rukwa. Oh, my homies hate Rukwa. God, Schnappledoop, do we really need to go through Rukwa? No, no, we, we have to go through Rukwa. See, this right here, this is exactly why my homies hate Rukwa. There's never been a moment when natives did not appear in Rukwa, okay? Since you made me come all the way here to Bukwu, I'm gonna vassalize you, so this is gonna be my entry point into the Mutapan area afterwards for expansion which of course I want for two reasons first off these juicy gold mines and the second one is because I want to get uh, feudalism from Kilwa or at least try to get feudalism from Kilwa I might still have to spawn it myself let's see what uh, Papa RNG says about it hey we managed to get this because we unlocked the cult of Islam so we have four cults now if you don't know how the fetishist mechanics work with the cults you basically get a lot of cults from uh, battling other countries or coming into contact with other countries normally 
normally that happens from fighting other countries uh, armies you get one cult for each of the major religions so you get one cult for Islam one cult for Christianity one cult for Buddhism one cult for the Dharmic religions etc etc one for the Norse I think there's even an achievement that I got in my Congo video where I got all the cults you can find a link to the Congo video in the description below Boyos Nokos that's the African version now we can do the Vaslazoshki and give me all your money now let's go back home to kill off the rebels it is gonna be a lot of rebellions that we're gonna have to deal with in uh, this playthrough after we've unified this region we have to fight a lot of rebels let's go with the full annexation for Kawangwe we got only two nations left before we can unify for our second reformer of course we're going for the extra manpower I might even become a horde eventually since uh, becoming a horde is the easy way towards conquering all of Africa super fast it's basically what I did in my Congo playthrough and what do you know even more rebels I'm gonna be selling some titles and seizing crownlands afterwards since we're back up to 18% crownlands and we're gonna use that money that we got so we can recruit more mercenaries the Great Lake Free Company is not bad but this bad boy over here the Yaka Free Warriors has uh, two siege pips so I'm gonna go for the Yaka Free Warriors and it's a, it's a time for the next ver let's go oh boy we gotta go through Rukwa again ah oh, man my homie's not gonna be happy about going through this 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 right here this is why they're not happy okay and of course after that battle we gotta fight their army in this uh I'm guessing hill province highland province bless us lord schmegidu nope lord schmegidu didn't bless us let's get the ha let's get the snaps out of there <laughs> we, we lost that battle horribly we're coming back and this time we're coming back in force show these boys what we're made out of we're made out of mud apparently and I'm also not gonna go here I'm gonna go around and try and siege down a few provinces here and there rather than engage their army in a defensible location like the highlands that they got there we're actually using tactics this time all right because Burundi is also allied to Kazembe I attack Burundi so that this way it's only me and Burundi in this separate war and I can piece them out before piecing out uh, Kazembe in the other war this is just massive brain and something that you should do in your games also boom boys no more burundians i bet real life rwanda would be happy with this outcome and now pretty much the only thing we can do is just wait and core all of this stuff so we can form kitara Alrighty, boys we integrated our vassal in the south so uh we can use these uh provinces here as a foothold for expansion here we're gonna get a claim on uh, maravi first let's do that right now and they're allied to butua so if i'm a little bit lucky i might be able to get a vassal in Butua too. Let's start by moving our troops to that area first, I guess. We can also make Maravi our rival, and we can start getting a claim on Kilwa for afterwards. Kilwa has most of the gold mines now since they crushed Mutupa. I think I speak for everybody when I say attacking the natives in Rukwa is what all my homies want right now. <laughs> I need to stop talking about homies, seriously. Like, someone's gonna clip this and make a Reddit post again. Alright, let's get by the border now and get ready for the big Verski, boys. Avec like Kobo Raid Butua and Alessa go we got like double the amount of troops that they have so we should have an easy war here was not wrong about the easy war part boys I've actually decided not to care about the uh, Butua for now I will attack him later on first I want to vassalize Mutapa here for their cores plus I need to recover my manpower the main reason I pieced out so quickly though is because I can now form the Empire of Kitara Buganda becomes the new Kapitalski gain new traditions and ambitions and we also colonized some provinces like the province of Rukva. No more natives to be messing with. We also get Lega as a Siberian frontier and we get the two provinces of Kuria and Shaga as Siberian frontiers. That means that this mechanic here is the same like the one the Russians have where as long as you don't go with your units over these provinces eventually they will colonize these provinces by themselves without having to use colonists in the process and this is just amazing that now now we have a continuous connection between the Interlacostine area all the way to the rich gold mines of Mutapa and even to the Congo via Lega. We also have the Kitaran ideas which are pretty strong. We got infantry combat ability, prestige decay and manpower recovery, tolerance of the true faith, unjustified demands minus 20% cost, construction cost, core creation cost minus 15% and culture conversion cost minus 25 which is why Kitara is definitely a a, uh, candidate for a one faith one culture run since it has the extra culture conversion cost reduction and we can now make kill a rival actually can I can I ally them first as always don't forget to lower autonomy in provinces to significantly increase our economy and man 
and power pool in the process. And yes, I know that I see this in pretty much every video. Just remember, okay, it's important, God schnapple dupe. I'm like your dad reminding you every five minutes that you're supposed to go to school and you're like in bed still thinking about the fact that there's a chance you might not have to go to school despite your dad right next to you telling you you have five minutes to go to school. What I'm saying is nobody likes to go to school, all right? That's just a fact right there. Except for that guy who keeps asking for extra homework and reminds the teacher that we have to show our uh, cards and stuff. I hate that guy. And yes, in case you're wondering, I was that guy. I'm kidding. No, I'm not kidding. I, I was. I'm sorry. I want to apologize to all my classrooms. I don't know how this conversation ended up with that situation, but whatever. Just, just focus on Kitara here. <laughs> because it's also taking a very long time for me to get feudalism from uh, Kilwa. I've actually just spawned it in uh, Neduga, and we're gonna embrace it now. Let's see if we can. 305 ducats, not too bad. That means we just gotta get one loan, Dariagoski. And now we can also get Admin Tech 3 and work our way over here since we have feudalism. Great, because it means we can catch up with the uh, kill ones, especially militarily speaking. Of course it took 640 days to take Zimbabwe. Why would it not take 640 days to take Zimbabwe? Am I right here? Alright, let's uh, stack and Vapenik on their army and make them our Vasulski. Daria, go and give us your money too. Don't cancel any claims, but cancel the rivalry because Butoa is going to be your friend very soon since we'll make him another vassal. And let's go back home. We got to kill off the rebels next before we attack the uh, kill ones. Oh, look at that. We can ask these boys to transfer their trade power to us. Let's see who else we can ask. Offer knowledge sharing. Okay, I can make some money from offering knowledge sharing too whilst I'm at it. There you go. Trade power 16%. Thank you very much. And I just realized I was not using my other merchant. Very massive brain right there. That actually improved my economy by quite a bit. We're making profit, boys. 4.84 ducats for us is a big amount of ducats right now. And we just got military tech 5. So we are on par with the Swahili units of Kilwa. Bro, for real, Kilwa just annexed Butua. Aw, oh, man, this is not going good, is it? And they also managed to get uh, military tech 6. So they will have the advantage. But I'm still gonna attack them. Whatever happens, happens. Let's go with our war target here. There was Vult, as they say, in the lands of uh, Kitara. Probably not what they say in the lands of Kitara. It's okay, just, just go along with it, guys. Let's see if we win this battle. Hey, we did win it. And we're also gonna stack wipe this reinforcement that they got coming in. Uh-huh. Small steps for man, but big steps for the Kiganji people. Oops, I'm getting carpet sieged. Isn't that like a Britney Spears song? Oops, I'm getting carpet sieged again. And we should always try and kill them off whenever they got small stacks around. Avoid the big armies, obviously. Whilst they're sieging me down, I'm sieging them down. <laughs> oh my god, did they actually get 21% on my capital already? Oh, the RNG is not with me today, boys. Alright, the obviously smart thing to do is to siege down their small allies. Even though they're small, they have uh, 14,000 units together in these three provinces. So by taking them out, I take out more than half of uh, the enemy army, essentially. White piece is what I'm going here for. So, I got a bit of a dilemma. If I stay in the war for a little bit longer, I could go for 100% war score, but I don't want to get my army stack wiped because I want to start expanding in the Central African parts. So I'm going to piece them out now. I can get a fairly decent amount of land here. Maybe a little bit of money. 70 ducats. Fine, I'll take it. And this way I save my troops so I can use them in the next war right after this. Let's go over here. We also fed our vassal all of their provinces and we got some provinces for ourselves, including the gold mines in Sofala and Butua. So that right there just fixed our economy for the rest of the game. And yes, in case you want I basically hired all of the mercenary companies that I could hire. I need the troops. I don't have the manpower. I have the economy though, so I'm just taking advantage of being rich and uh, using my money for the greater good, of course. Totally not for enslaving and killing everybody around. These guys are transferring trade power. I'm okay with the trade power, bro. Just, uh, you know, transfer your soul instead, my boy. I'm calling in uh, Kazembe, my ally, for now, my ally, so I can feed him some lands and then uh, make him nice and plump and then diplovassalize them or just kill him off if I don't have the ability to diplovassalize them. I was really thinking the other day, guys, how E4 has really come a massive way since uh, it got launched. Version 1.0 of this game is almost unplayable today, considering the amount of um, difficulty that that version has compared to this version, let's say. For example, you used to have one fort in every single province before, so in order to siege down a country that's five provinces, you have to siege five fortifications <laughs> as consequence. It was not easy when this game was first launched. It was basically very similar to EU3 with some differences of course but the core stuff was very much so still EU3 let's say. Hey we got Diplotech 4 noise about time in 
1489. I know that I'm selling this as the Wakanda of Africa, but it doesn't really feel like the Wakanda, does it? It will after we get the gold mines, trust, trust. Well, looks like we can peace out even though we um, still haven't uh, separately pieced out this nation. And we can take all of the schnapps in the uh, eastern part of their country, which is perfect. This is going to allow the rest of my expansion in here. I'm also going to have to dismantle the Yaka Free Warriors because they don't have any more manpower reserves. But I'll do that right after I use their manpower pool here to kill my rebels first. I really hope this run encouraged you guys to play a little bit more outside of Europe because I know that 90% of the player base does play in Europe and the reality is that there's so many fun nations outside of that particular spectrum that you really should try out if especially if you've played EU4 for a while and you want to check something new out and hey if you want to check something new out you also have to check out this awesome Circassia run right over here and I want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons channel members and Twitch subscribers I would not be able to do this without all your support 